Well, hey folks, it's Justin from CartoonSmart.com, and uh, this is going to be the first in many videos where I just kind of uh, detail as, as quick as possible uh, b how to get started with Adobe Animate, and uh, we'll kind of break these videos down by um, uh, sort of short topics like for this one, let's just talk about the uh, the selection tools over here, the toolbar, and uh, that'll give us a nice little title for social media posting, right? Just the selection tool, something like that. So, uh, first off, we've got uh, two choices over here. We've got our black arrow and our uh, white arrow, or the sub selection tool. Uh, I actually uh, I've been using the program for like 20 years, so that's not a joke. Uh, and I was always used to uh, using the A key for uh, going over here to the black arrow. So you'll see that um, my hotkey, which shows up right, you know, right over there, uh, is, uh, is set to A. Yours might not be. Don't worry about it. Uh, if you want to uh, change your preferences around uh, that, you can do. Actually, that would be under uh, keyboard shortcuts. But while we are over here, uh, check this out. If you go over here to drawing, I really prefer uh, the selection to be set to uh, not set to contact sensitive selection tools. And uh, basically what that means is that when I'm selecting things, uh, like a movie clip, for example, which we'll get into a little bit later, uh, I have to select the whole thing. OK, so I have to basically come over here and just, you know, grab all of it versus uh, if I had that toggled on, if I just selected a little tiny bit of it, right, it's it would select the whole thing. I just find uh, for me, it's a lot easier to just kind of go out here and make sure like so, for example, I'm going to select this text right here. Right. So I know to get it, I, I basically got to get the entire thing, okay, not just a portion of it. But while I'm doing that, I'm also avoiding, you know, selecting the guy back here too. You know, if I wanted to get both of them, I'd have to do it like kind of a broader range. So um, I think that's important in terms of just getting around early on. Uh, and then back to the arrow tool over here. Um, for the most part, um, I'm, I'm, I use the black arrow for uh, selecting things and also for drawing things as well. Uh, whereas with the sub selection tool, I can show you, you know, it'll do you know some similar things, right? In that case, it's not even selecting it. But um, let's let's take a look at, at one example. So I'm gonna um, basically just double click into uh, this movie clip right now. Again, we'll get into creating movie clips and all that in another video. Uh, and I'm gonna keep doing that until I basically get down to the kind of the raw vector art of this thing. Uh, and then I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit over here. So you can see that uh, with the black arrow on, I can kind of and it's, maybe it's hard to tell that I've, I've selected this, but I have selected this. You'll notice over here it changes the color of the skin. Uh, or the basically the fill shape, um, and then I'm selecting a separate section, which is the the black outline of it. Okay, and if I hover over here to the side of it, you'll notice that uh, I can start kind of pulling apart the uh, the shapes over here and uh, kind of you know manipulating. Uh, the appearance of them, and uh, you know, fine tuning things, stuff like that. I can also add vector points doing this, uh, or I can actually kind of identify the vector points. If you notice, if you look closely with that arrow right there, it it uh, on the side of it, it changed to that right angle versus when I'm over here, it's it's that kind of arc. So that identifies that that's a, a vector point right there, and you can kind of get a better handle on that when I pull it out. See, it looks like a little point, right? Um, uh, so, um, boy, this is oh, to, to add new ones, uh, I can hold down the uh, the option key, and that'll hold, that'll create a new uh, vector point along there. Again, you're not seeing it, but it's been created. I can kind of keep doing that, right? Uh, if you're on the PC, I believe that is the com control key that does that. Uh, now, if I switch over here to the sub selection tool, okay, you're actually going to see uh, those vector points that are making up the shape, okay, and uh, they're going to exist for this outline that's separate and if I were to click inside on just the uh, you know the interior color of it obviously too you're seeing the vector the, yeah the vector shapes for that uh, and then if you know if you click on one of them on the actual vector points you, you get these handles to kind of manipulate things like that uh, I don't actually uh, draw in Adobe animate like that um, it's just you know, uh, like I said, 20 years or so, I uh, this this tool uh, was not there in the beginning, and um, I've I've always found it just to be a little bit easier to just grab something like a rectangle or an oval to start with, and here, let me turn this off. There we go, and uh, I'll get rid of that shape right there, and just kind of sort of wing it without seeing the vector points, okay? And I know that might be kind of tough for somebody that's coming from um, an Adobe Illustrator background where you. Uh, you know where those vector points are, are quite prevalent but you know I think you get a good handle of where they're at even when you don't see them okay and for me it just kind of feels a little bit cleaner to 
you know, just kind of do things like that. So that is, uh, that's where I'm coming from, from a drawing standpoint, you can do whatever you want. Uh, but, uh, that's, that's primarily the difference between, uh, the, uh, selection tool and the, uh, the sub selection tool. Now, um, uh, let's get into some ways of selecting that I never uh, deal with. I, I don't ever use the lasso tool. It's just, uh, not something I even think about in this program. Uh, you can see there's also a polygon tool. Again, it's, you know, you can select things like this, but uh, I just, there's nothing we to select there, but uh, I just don't do it. And then if you wanted to uh, select things with a magic wand, okay, now this gets really weird. So we've been dealing with vector points right now. Let me just find an image on my desktop. Okay, here we go, here's a fun one. My buddy, uh, let me shrink this up a little bit. My buddy celebrates the fifth day of Hanukkah at a Mexican restaurant, so he calls it Cinco de Hanukkah. And uh, I did a little logo for him for a t-shirt. Anyway, so I've just imported in this image, and this is an image, it's not uh, vector art, at least not <laughs> when I imported in an, an image. It's a bitmap, uh, just start as a JPEG. And, uh, and you would think, oh, okay, I'm gonna go over here and use the magic wand tool to select some of this stuff. Nope, not so fast. What you actually have to do to do that is break this apart. So go over here to uh, modify, uh, where is it at? Actually, I have to have it selected. So go select it first, there we go. Now go over to modify, uh, break apart. I use a hotkey command B for this. Uh, and now it's, <laughs> you can see, you can kind of select it like it's a fill shape now and you can even kind of bend things around and you'll start to repeat the image down there. But now you can actually use the uh, the magic wand tool on this. So you can see, I mean, it's a little hard to tell there, but yeah, there we go on the red, it's a little bit more obvious. So it does allow you to select parts of this and, uh, and kind of pull it off. I guess it actually selected both of the, there we go. So yeah, I've got that little part selected and I could pull that out. And uh, you know, in terms of usefulness, uh, I rank this pretty low, <laughs> uh, mostly because I just consider Adobe Animate to be a vector-based program and I rarely ever use it for uh, direct manipulation of images like that. Uh, most likely if I was, if I, to repeat what I was kind of just doing, I'd probably do that in a, in a different program like Photoshop, but I also probably wouldn't be working in Adobe Animate at all in that instance. I'd be doing something in Photoshop. So uh, I think that is, uh, that's kind of where I want to leave it with the uh, the selection and subselection tool. And uh, again, we touched briefly on the magic wand. Oh, you know what, while we're at it, because I don't feel like it's a separate video for this, you can go over here and play around with the rotate uh, tool. This uh, will rely on you having a movie clip, which we'll talk about later, but you can see what this does. Uh, so if you want to do some kind of like three-dimensional or yes, kind of pseudo 2.5D dimensional type stuff, uh, you can play around with uh, that option. It, you know, at times actually, I, I don't want to knock this tool. It, um, it, it can be um, fun for certain things, but um, again, it's just not one that, uh, that I frequently uh, use. And then tucked underneath there, there's also a 3D transform tool, which kind of allows you to kind of move some stuff back there on 3D space. So, uh, but you know, this is really kind of not a 3D program. Uh, anyway, <laughs> all right, that'll do it. Eight minutes, that's enough to talk about. That's enough time to spend on this. And I'll see you guys in the next one of these videos. Be sure to visit uh, cartoonsmart.com uh, for, uh, you know, all your training needs and a lot more.